Hello from Spiritual Seeds, from Father Ivano. I will um, give a small introduction to this gospel that is called the Gospel of the Samaritan Woman. What is this gospel about? This gospel, you will hear it, is fundamentally a dialogue. It's Christ speaking to this woman in a dialogue. And this dialogue happens by a well. And a lot of the dialogue is about uh, water, different kinds of water. Why all of this? Because in four weeks' time, literally, uh, today is Saturday, in four weeks' time is the Paschal Vigil. And in the middle of that night, there is a dialogue. And it is not by a well, it is by what we call a baptismal font. And on that night, over that water, the Holy Spirit will come and will make of that uh, water a different kind of water a living water. That is a water that comes from his side. Blood and water. The blood to forgive our sins and the water is the life-giving spirit of Christ. So this gospel is about me and you and is about our baptism. What is all about? What is the grace of your baptism? The grace to do what? I will proclaim this gospel. It's going to be rather long because these gospels come from John and they have a catechetical uh, uh, taste. So I will try to read a shortened version. I will encourage you to listen because what it carries is a very incredible good news, a very powerful message to do with me, with you, not with a strange, anonymous woman. That woman is you and me. From the Gospel according to John, Jesus came to the Samaritan town called Sica, near the land, that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well is there, and Jesus, tired by the journey, sat straight down by the well. It was about the sixth hour, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, What, you are a Jew, and you ask me, a Samaritan, for a drink? Jews, in fact, do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus replied, If you only knew what God is offering, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have been the one to ask and he would have given you living water. You have no bucket, sir, she answered, and the well is deep. How could you get this living water? Are you a greater man than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself with his sons and his cattle? Jesus replied, Whoever drinks this water will get thirsty again. But anyone who drinks the water that I shall give will never be thirsty again. The water that I shall give will turn into a spring inside him, welling up to eternal life. Sir, said the woman, Give me some of that water, so that I may never get thirsty and never have to come here again to draw water. 
Go and call your husband, said Jesus to her, and come back here. The woman answered, I have no husband. He said to her, you are right to say I have no husband, for although you have had the five, the one you have now is not your husband. You spoke the truth there. I see you are a prophet, sir, said the woman. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, while you say that Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation comes from the Jews. But the hour will come, in fact, it is here already, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. That is the kind of worshipper the Father wants. God is spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah, that is Christ, is coming, and when he comes, he will tell us everything. I, who am speaking to you, said Jesus, I am he. The woman put down a water jar and hurried back to the town to tell the people, come and see a man who has told me everything I ever did. I wonder if he is the Christ. This brought people out of the town and they started walking towards him. The Gospel of the Lord. This is a short version. I hope if you have the time, you can read the whole of chapter 4 of John. It's a very dense text, and at the time, I don't want to make this too long. What I want to say is something very simple. There is a woman and there is a man. A Samaritan woman and a Jewish man, in fact, a rabbi. And on paper, and because of the history of Israel, it is impossible to have any communion between this man and this woman. It is impossible, because of who they are, that these two can have anything in common. But there is something here that Christ and this woman meet in by a well, and that in the Bible carries a very deep meaning. That is, it is by a well that a husband, a future husband, is looking for his future wife. That is, Christ is saying that he wants to marry this woman, but she is unmarriageable. It is not possible. So what is happening? How is it possible that Christ will marry me and you? Christ will do it in this way. He will put this woman, he will put our life under the truth. What is the truth of this woman? Is that this woman has become fundamentally an empty jar. This jar, of which we speak a lot here in the Gospel, this well, has become a life. She is empty. She is thirsty. And she is broken. All these infidelities, all these husbands, all these idols, all this need and looking for life and needing more is us. She is fundamentally an empty jar, pretty broken and chipped in many places. And she is used to a routine 
no hope. In fact, she goes to that well at uh, midday when there is no hope because the sun is so hot, no hope to find anyone. She has reached game over. Game over. And maybe that is often where we are. Or even the society, even a priest or a marriage or England, a country, a community. At one point, we can find ourselves an empty jar, always thirsty for life, always needing more, always unhappy, with no hope. And at that point, Christ begins the dialogue. And the, the dialogue begins very simply. I shall give you a promise. I will give you something new. And Christ calls this living water. I will give to you a new shape. Not anymore an empty jar trying to be filled with water and somehow because it is broken, this water goes and is lost. But I will make of you a spring of water. That is, Christ has the power to change our nature, to change our life to make of us what he is like. Because the marriage is the union of two persons, the same nature. This is the point of Christians. When we renew our baptismal faith at Easter, we renew the fact that in that water, Christ and me became one. That in that font, by the church, I was married with Christ. I belong to him. He belongs to me. My body and this body are one. And what Christ is doing in these Sundays is meeting us and saying, but my dear, you are an empty jar. You are full of holes. You are still looking for life in the wrong place, in a career, in a bit of affection, in your will be established, in your, I don't know, in your name. And that dialogue, loving dialogue, but also truth, enables this woman to enter a truth. And then the invitation, woman, believe me, that is, uh, turn to me. Turn to me for life. And in the end, she, says the gospel, she, the woman, put down a water jar. And it's not the water jar here is not just simply that tool that she used to drink. The, the, the water jar had become an old nature what St. Paul calls the old man, old woman, old marriage, old priesthood, old community, old parish, old church, with a mentality of taking life and always being empty. That woman puts down by the baptism, by the well, she puts down the old man, the old nature. And she has been covered and received this spirit of Christ, this living water. That is, a nature has changed. She, a life, is now a life that gives water to other people. People will drink from her. Your husband can drink from you. Your children can drink from you as parents. My parishioners could drink from me. I can drink from the other. That is, we 
through baptism, through the dialogue of faith, through repentance, that is to leave this jar, we receive a new nature to become like him, giving life, life giving. And then she becomes a missionary. She goes to town and she says, I have found him. I finish with this. For me, this is the most beautiful word of John that repeats many times. Here, the English got it completely wrong. He says, how could you get this living water? It's not the how. Sometimes English can be very practical, which is good, but not here. Here, the question is not how. How can you change? How can you love your husband? How can you live chaste? It's not a technique. The question here is where from? Poten in Greek. A typical key theological adverb preposition of John. Where from? Where does life come from? Where does your life come from? It comes from him. Let us see each other next Sunday.